Heart disease is the number one killer in the United States, and that we know for a fact. Certainly do, but what if everything we thought we knew about the cause and the cure turned out to be wrong? Mm. Fox 13 Cynthia Smoot joins us now with some intriguing new research to tell us about. And that's a good description, too. Pretty intriguing. You know, cholesterol has long been singled out as really the big bully on the block when it comes to coronary artery disease. But now some researchers dare to say that cholesterol may be just a bit player. They say not only do they know what causes heart disease, they just may be on to a cure. Steve, as the field comes down, the green flag waves, and we are underway at Sebring. On the racetrack. Now, this is a very contemporary building. Mm -hmm. Or designing luxury high-rises. Jerry Kurtz isn't one to sit still. The market. Now, this is just the, the helmet that I use to race cars. And... But despite an active and healthy lifestyle, Jerry couldn't overcome his family history of heart disease, even after two bypass surgeries. I didn't have a lot of stamina, so I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. Well, let me take a listen to you and see what's going on. That's when Jerry's doctor suggested a radical new therapy, something called Nanobac TX, a prescription compound created by Tampa researcher Dr. Gary Mazzo. And I think it's the delivery method that really is making the difference. It's based on a theory so new and so controversial, it's sure to raise some eyebrows in mainstream medical circles. We know how big this is. Mizzou contends that the big culprit in heart disease isn't so much cholesterol, but rather an infection in the blood from a tiny, slow-growing bacteria called Nanobacterium sanguinium. This, he's certain, is the real cause of coronary artery disease. As certain as I am, I've ever been of anything in my entire life. Mizzou has been working with Finnish doctor Alec Yonder, one of the scientists who discovered the bacteria in human blood. That was remarkable. That was huge because um, <clears throat> this was a new form of life. Just how tiny are these nanobacteria? Well, consider this. 50,000 of them could fit on the tip of this pen. These pictures of the bacteria were taken by a high-powered electron microscope. Researchers say they seem to be everywhere in our environment, in our food, our water. Some of us may even be born with them. But how exactly do they give us heart disease? Mizzou says they seem to set up shop in our veins and arteries. They calcify and build upon themselves like little coral reefs. They also secrete a film that forces the body to fight back. That stimulates our immune system to try to cover it up and wall it off. And so that lays down and makes more soft plaque. That's heart disease. But how do you stop it? Mizzou says that's where his medicine comes in. Patients take Nanobac TX at night, a pill, a powder, and a suppository. Here's how it works. The nanobacteria are buried inside their thick calcium shells. A chemical in the prescription called EDTA unroofs the shell from the bacteria, allowing the antibiotic, tetracycline, to get in and kill them. But is it really effective? Are you not having chest pain? No chest pains, none whatsoever. Gary's cardiologist, Dr. Benny Maniscalco, just finished a four-month study with 77 patients. He says heart scans taken before and after show some pretty amazing early results. It appears that uh, well over 60% of the patients will have significant drops in their calcium scores. And that's astonishing in and of itself. Lower calcium scores suggest plaque is being removed from the arteries. He also saw drops in patients' cholesterol and triglycerides. I'm pretty skeptical. But for many doctors, this is a scientific leap. Cardiologist John Sullebarger says there's no proof yet that removing calcium from arteries prevents heart attacks. And he'll want to see more evidence about nanobacteria. To say that little bacteria are present is not proof that they're causing disease, necessarily. Lift your chin for me. Dr. Maniscalco agrees that more and bigger studies are needed. But after seeing changes in his own patients, he thinks they're on to something. If that study is done on a large-scale basis and turns out to be, in fact, the truth, it will revolutionize everything we do in cardiology. Jerry Kurtz is already a believer. He says his heart scan showed a 30% blockage 
that disappeared after Nanobac TX. So did his arthritis. This is really seems to be a, a godsend for me. Instead of waiting till the guy comes in with the heart attack, maybe we should already know what's going to happen and do something to make sure that this doesn't happen to people. People shouldn't have to be cut on. Patients typically are on Nanobac TX for several months, then they drop back to what they call maintenance. That might be just three days a month. Now, the treatment isn't cheap. A prescription costs about $300 a month, but Dr. Bizeau now tells us that some insurance companies are starting to cover this. It is by prescription. It's amazing. A lot of people at home are going to be going, okay, I want to find out more information. What is next? Are there going to be more studies? Well, they're hoping that this one study they did, that Dr. Maniscalco did, will be so intriguing, the findings, that it will lead to bigger and larger studies, which obviously they need to try to prove this theory. And there is some separate research going on, in fact, at the Mayo Clinic. It's going to be presented in just a week or so at an American Heart Association. And a separate researcher has found the presence of nanobacteria in calcified heart arteries. So wow. um, it is a, some very interesting things going on. If you want to know more about it, you log on to WTVT.com. That's right. Very important information. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia.